Hello there, guys, and welcome to Mad Doc Minis. So I finally did it. I finally went and bought myself an enormous pile of 3D printed Space Marines. <laughs> These are from the That Evil One range, and I got them from a guy in the UK. I think he's been shut down since, unfortunately, by Games Workshop, you know, IP issues and all the rest of it. Um, but I specifically asked for mine to be ramped up to Primaris size. You know me, that was never not going to happen. And he did a quite a good job of that, actually. Um, if you compare against an intercessor here, it's pretty much spot on. I like the armor style as well. It's kind of like a cross between Mark III and Mark II. Uh, so I really like it and very appropriate for Horus Heresy. So uh, yeah, happy with the quality overall. Um, there's a few mistakes here and there. Nothing really, really offensive. Uh, it depends how discerning you are, really. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm super happy. Great value. £25 for 20 It's really, really good, isn't it? I mean, you're not going to get much cheaper than that unless you print them out yourself. And that's certainly something I'm not interested in doing. So I'm happy to buy 3D printed minis uh, as long as I like them, of course. And that's exactly what I did here. Um, so yeah, I'm quite happy with the posing of these miniatures. There's a couple of duplicates, but actually not many. They're all quite similar in their kind of posing, but they're not. a lot of them aren't actually identical. So here I had one bad misprint, but that was actually replaced by another miniature. So what I ended up with a, a kind of free a freebie misprint, which I'm going to do something with. I'll probably give them a bionic leg or something at some stage. Um, so... Yeah, with 3D printed minis, of course, you've got all these kind of little like uh, tabs attached to them, probably from the supporting struts or something, I would I would imagine. So you just got to go around and tidy all those off. It's not really that much different from having a plastic miniature off the sprue, really, is it? Same kind of same deal, really. Um, so I just go around and tidy all those up with a sharp knife and some hobby snips and um, and sort that all out, really. Um, not to perfection. I'm just not a perfectionist with these kind of things. So you'll probably notice a few still attached even after painting at the end. If that offends you, really, really sorry. It's just not the way I roll, you know, just don't care enough. But um, sort out all the really offensive ones here. And not this fast either. This is speeded up, of course. <laughs> and uh, yeah, glue them onto the bases. I did have just enough bases to do this initial squad, which I was pleased about. I didn't check that. Uh, bit silly there but I did have enough and um, yeah I'm just doing another little scale check before I uh, glue the rest on and yeah it's, it's good it's exactly what I wanted so I'm really really happy with the size and the and the style of these so I go ahead and go into mass production glue them all to their bases lean them up against each other they stood up quite well a few needed some support so I just kind of lent one on its next door neighbor to kind of uh, help it to dry really super glue of course because it's a uh, resin here you can see the whole squad. It's uh, looking pretty good there. You can see there's a good deal of variation in the posing, but they're all reasonably similar. So I go ahead and do the painting. This is not a painting tutorial, and I understand that is not why you guys come to my channel. That's fine. Um, I'm a very basic painter, so I just throw on black templar here, uh, speed paint, you know, the, um, what do you call it, um, contrast paint over the top of a Rathbone uh, undercoat. And uh, that dries quite blotchy. I'm actually really pleased with that. I like that look. But uh, if you don't, just beware that, of course, flat surfaces, contrast paints, you will end up with a slightly blotchy finish. Uh, here, I uh, do a little bit of uh, Flesh Terrors Red on the gun. You can see here I'm going for a Dark Angels colour scheme. So the, the red really just helps to add a bit of interest to the miniature, breaks up the, the drab nature of it. So that's nice. Rarely paint guns in bright colours. So it was quite a nice kind of break to do that here. Uh, um, next up is the metalwork. I actually changed the order of things later on. You'll see later I actually undercoat all the metalwork in Black Templar first. This was my practice miniature, which is why I'm not doing it here. So that was just a uh, lead belcher there. And I'm just putting a bit of lead belcher on the studs as well, just to make them pop on the, uh, on the greaves. So that was easily done. And uh, here I'm just throwing on a little bit of null oil onto the weapon just to make all the details pop a little bit more. For transfers, I used the Indomitus transfer sheet, just cut the Dark Angels transfers off of that. I wasn't about to spend another 20 quid or whatever it is on a Horus Heresy transfer sheet. Just not worth it for the Dark Angels. Not plenty of those transfers going, so I might as well use them. I did experiment with a little bit of staining red on the wings of the transfer to see if I could get it looking a little bit more like the Horus Heresy version. It was okay, and it was quite easy to do. I uh, ultimately opted against that. I just preferred the look of the, the white uh, transfers, dirtied up with a bit of null null. It just was a better look for me, but just to show you, you can do that to reasonable effect, actually, the staining. So here you can see what I was talking about earlier. I kind of undercoated all the, the metal bits with the Black Templar first, and that definitely turned out better. Metallics, um, especially the silvers, go quite well over, over a black undercoat, don't they? So that was definitely the right thing to do there. Um, 
moving on, I um, I did. Uh, what else did I do? I used like a kind of dark, like a very dark bronzy color on the on the shoulder trim. Now you could definitely go a few shades lighter than this, but I really like the kind of dark bronze color. Um, so that that kind of worked well for me. But you could go for like a Rune Lord brass or something if you want it to kind of pop a little bit more. But I was really happy with the way these turned out. I'm quite a drab painter in general, so <laughs> I'm happy with this kind of thing. No muted kind of colors and all the rest of it. So yeah, super happy with that. Um, I'm a bit upset they didn't have any kind of distinct eye lenses because I like picking out the eye lenses. They have tiny little slits, these miniatures for the eyes, but I wasn't about to kind of mess them up and try and do anything with those. So I just left it as it is. Um, you can see here the shoulder trim popping nicely. That's uh, just right for me. Uh, this is all 20 done up. You can see here I got a bit crazy with transfers from the kind of the checkered patterns on the on the other shoulder pad. That was from the Ultramarines, uh, you know, transfer sheet. And here I'm just doing a direct comparison against an intercessor. So you can see that kind of size potential there. And I think that is spot on. So he did really, really well with my request there. I'm going to do some other comparisons for you and uh, and just show you what this these miniatures that are like against some some other key miniatures really uh so yeah very good comparison against the intercessor uh next up i compare against a, a horse heresy mark six and you can see here we've got quite a, a height increase and a bulk increase um, especially on the legs and uh, i'm really really happy with that um, the mark sixes are a little bit small for my tastes i, I don't really like the in-betweeny size and i just wish games workshop would kind of settle on a scale and kind of just <laughs> stick to it but you know they're not going to obviously so I'm going to have to kind of do my own conversions until that happens but uh, yeah so there's that one I compare next against an unaltered Mark III which is probably the closest um, official miniature to the, the one that I've got in terms of the, the mark of the armor you can see here a massive increase in height the Mark III's are so small by today's kind of standards and uh, he just looks really dumpy and squat next to him but um, I have a lot of love for the original Mark III's so it's just they're not big enough for me and uh, next up is a comparison with the Tortuga Bay Mark III which is quite a bit taller and bigger so-called true scale I don't really differentiate between Primaris and true scale that much it's just one of my quirks but um you can see here this miniature fares a lot better slight difference in height slightly shorter but not much at all and uh, much better proportions overall i do do a comparison with the tortuga bay and the mark six later on so stick around for that because i know i missed that on my last video here i'm just comparing against acadian just you know for some context especially with the new acadians in the more realistic proportions Astartes miniatures look awesome because they just look so massive and powerful against them. So I think that's one of the advantages of the of the newer Cadian kit, the kind of more realistic proportions. It just really, really enhances a, a Space Marine when you put it next to it. So um, yeah, as promised, here's a comparison now against the Tor well, the Tortuga Bay miniature, the Mark III, and the Horus Heresy Mark VI. So if you missed that in my previous video, here it is. I, I had a couple of comments on that, and sadly I didn't have one available at the time of making that video, but I since made this guy up. And this is out of the box, this is unaltered, uh, just to show you the kind of the size difference, just in case you're interested there. So uh, I hope you enjoyed things uh, today, guys, and um, just please uh, consider liking and sharing if you've enjoyed the content. And uh, if you're not already subscribed, consider giving me a sub. But here are a squad of 10 on the turntable. You can get a better sense of those transfers, the kind of checkered patterns that I messed around with on the uh, on the right shoulder pad. Got really funky with some of that, but I just wanted a way to kind of make them look a little bit more interesting. Because, of course, you know, Dark Angels, the original colours are quite drab and just wanted to kind of spice them up a little bit, really. Let me know what you think in the comments, guys. I'm, you know, curious to hear your thoughts on this. And I really hope you enjoyed this video. Just me sharing my hobby with you, this one, really. And... Um, I'll catch up with you again very, very soon. So until then, take care. Cheers.